In this presentation, I will talk about regression when we have ind indicator variables. The outline of this presentation would be to define uh, indicator variables, uh, show models with single indicator variable, uh, show models with interaction terms with another indicator variable, then several related indicator variables, interaction terms with a non-indicator variable, and then show F-test and Chow test for differences across groups. So what are indicator or also called dummy variables? These are binary variables defined as 0 or 1. They only have two values, 0 or 1. These indicator variables convey qualitative information uh, as opposed to quantitative information like numbers. So examples are female, uh, married, graduated, or insured. Um, and in this case, if we have a variable female, then female equals 1 uh, would be for females, and female equals 0 would represent the males in the sample. Note that gender is not a good variable name because it's not clear if gender equals 1 refers to the male or female. So an indicator variable can be an independent variable in regression, which we will discuss here in this presentation, or the dependent variable in a probability logic model, which would be discussed in another presentation later. So let's uh, talk about the single indicator variable. So let's start with the most simplest of models, which is uh, we have regression of wage um, and there are no independent variables. Uh, so here the intercept beta zero hat would be the average value of wage or wage bar, uh, and that would be uh, this coefficient here. Now, complicating things a little bit, what if we have the regression model being this, where we have a single indicator variable here, female, and that's the coefficient. So the coefficient uh, delta zero hat uh, would be the difference in wage for females as compared to males. So this model would have different intercepts for females and males. So the intercept for male is basically this coefficient here, that's the intercept for males. But the intercept for females, because this variable would be equal to 1, we would also need to collect its coefficient. So that's why the intercept for females would be beta 0 hat plus delta 0 hat. And for males, it would only be this intercept because female would be equal to 0. So here, uh, when we have no other independent variables, the intercept for females would be the average wage for females, and the intercept for males uh, would be the average wage for males. So note uh, one thing here is that um, the regression uh, t-test for significance of the coefficient on female, this one, uh, would be an identical uh, to the t-test for significant differences in wages between two groups of females and males. They would have the same mean, the same t-statistic, and the same p-value. So you can either test for significant differences in wages between male and female with a t-test for significant differences in two groups, or you can use this regression here with an uh, indicator variable female and then look at the coefficient here and use a t-test for it. So here's an example. Uh, so the first model here is if we just have wage on uh, regressed on a constant, no independent variables. So in this case, this intercept here of, of 5.90 would be the average uh, value of wage. Uh, so that would be wage bar of $5.90. This is what the average wage is for people in the sample. Now, if we estimate the model with wage and female here being our independent variable, uh, this will be the coefficient here on female. So because the coefficient is minus 2.51, that will be the effect of this uh, variable female on the variable uh, wage. So how would we interpret this coefficient? We first of all notice that it's significant. Uh, and then we would say that Females have um, 
$2.51 lower wages than males. So notice that the interpretation of this coefficient is with respect to the reference or base categories of, of males. So you just can't, cannot say females have uh, 2.51 lower wages. You need to say then whom. And then whom is the category, the base or reference category that is not included in the model. So now the intercept here is actually the average uh, wage for males, which is $7.10. So how will we get the uh, average uh, wage or uh, the intercept for females is we need to collect this coefficient my, uh, plus the coefficient on female, which happened to be minus 2.51. So this coefficient plus this coefficient would be equal to 4.59. And this is actually the um, 4.59 is the average wa wage for females. Um, so if we look at the graph here, um, if we plot female against wage, Notice that all of the points are actually uh, grouped like that. It looks very strange because we only have two values of a female, the zero and the one. So here are all the males, here are all the females. Uh, th that's their data. And so if we estimate a regression line, it looks strange like that. But that slope here is the... Uh, a minus 2.51 that's the slope for female and if we see the intercept this is like where where it hits here that will be the seven dollars and ten cents here and if we see where this hits at one that would be the four dollars and 59 uh, cents so again that difference here between the average wage for males and for females is also exactly the 2.51 that's the difference uh, between them now let's talk about dummy variable trap. So that refers to the problem that not all categories can be included in the regression and one category needs to be left out, which is called the base or reference category. For example, male and female cannot both be included in the regression because of perfect collinearity. If you try to estimate this model with any computer software, it will give you an error and it would drop one of the categories. So here, uh, what would happen if we include male instead of female in the regression? So this was our original model that had female as an independent variable. So what would happen if we actually substitute female with one minus male right here? And then we open the parentheses. So we would collect the intercept would be this. And the coefficient on male would be this times the minus uh, here sign. So it would be minus delta one. So this coefficient that we have here, um, uh, delta zero uh, hat on male, would have the same magnitude and significance as this coefficient here on female, but it would be opposite in sign. So again, so we would have again the coefficient on male uh, and female being exactly the same in value, but opposite in in sign. So the intercept here for um, uh, for the model with female is for the model with male would be this, and actually what this is is also the um, the average wage for uh, females. So we could either obtain it from here or. If we want to obtain the coefficient for female in this model, we would have to collect this one plus this would be equal to one. So we would have to include this one. So whether we are calculating the coefficient for female from this model and collecting these coefficient or for male. Uh, so if we have the females, that would be equal to zero. So we just need to look at the intercept. We would be getting exactly the same results for the intercept for female. So a regression can be estimated with both male and female, but only if no constant uh, is included, and this approach is not commonly used. So here is the model where we have wage uh, on female, and these are the coefficients uh, here. Uh, but, um, and uh, we would be saying that uh, females have $2.51 lower wages than males. So the base uh, 
category is the uh, male and that's why it's excluded from the model. In the second model here, where we have included the male uh, variable, but not the female variable, we have this coefficient of 2.51. So how we will say it is that males have $2.51 cents higher wages than females. So now the reference category is female. So notice the intercept um, for um, for uh, males, in this case is, if we just look the intercept for males, well, female would be equal to zero, so it's just this number here. That will be the intercept for males. Now, if we want to get the intercept for males here, because male, males would be equal to one here, we would need to collect this coefficient plus this coefficient. And by the way, if you sum these two up, that would be exactly this value and vice versa. If you want to know what is the intercept for females, well, it's it's this number here, 4.59, because males would be equal to zero at that time. So the intercept for females is 4.59. If you want to calculate it from here, you have to do this coefficient plus this coefficient on females. And these two coefficients summed up would be exactly that coefficient of 4.59. Uh, 59. So it's kind of circular. So when you replace female with male, two things happen. This coefficient here, same in, same in magnitude and significance, you see the standard errors are the same, but opposite signs. So just the signs flip. And the intercept are also related to each other because uh, this intercept is equal to this plus that, and this intercept is equal to this plus that. Um, so here is the model where we have no intercept uh, included, there's no constant, but both uh, female and male are included. So notice that these coefficients are exactly the intercepts that we're talking about here. But again, this model is not very much used. It's better practice to always skip uh, one of the categories in a, uh, with dummy variables so that we don't have this dummy variable trap. So now let's talk about interactions with another indicator variable. So suppose now we have interaction terms for uh, female and, and married. So we want to include both of these indicator variables in the regression. So these interaction terms could be done in two different way, ways. The first way is to include female uh, dummy variable and then married dummy va variable and then the interaction between female and married in the regression. So that's how the regression looks like. We have female, we have married, and then we have female times married in the model. Or number two, uh, this in this way, we can ca ca create four categories, females times single, male times single, females times married, or male times married. So basically these are all four combinations between uh, female and married. And we need to include only three of them in the regression because the fourth or omitted category would be the base category. So here we are including female times single, female times married, and male times married. And the males times single, uh, that is the reference category, and you see it, it is not included in the model. So let's see if we estimate this model versus this model, what kind of results do we get? Um, so first of all, this is how the data looks like. So here we have female, one minus female is equal to male. So you see like female is one, male is zero and, and vice versa. And here are single and married. So single is one, married is equal to one minus single. And so these are the values. So you're either single or married. And then female times single, uh, we're just multiplying the female times single and we're getting this number. Male times single, we're multiplying the male times single, we're getting this number. So now notice that here we have only one for one of the four categories and then the rest is zero. So here we have a one on female and married because that person right here is a female and she's married and the rest are zero and so same uh, and so forth. This person here is a male that is single and you can see that's male that's single. And so there's only one here, but the rest are zero. So now when we estimate the models, uh, the two different ways of estimating the same model, here is what we find. 
So in this first uh, regression, we have uh, wage on, regressed on female times single, female times married, and male times married. Notice that male times single was the reference category and it's omitted, so there's no coefficient for this. So these are the coefficients that we have. So this is the other model where we have female, married, and then female times married is an interaction variable. And these are the coefficients that we have. So how would we interpret these results? So if we look at this first coefficient on fem female times single, that is uh, minus uh, 0.56. So we would say that uh, single females would get 56 cents lower wages then, and we always need to say what the reference category is, which is then the single males, but this coefficient is not significant, okay? So um, the marginal effect here would be this value as well. So here, if we want to know what is the mar marginal effect on single and female, so if a person is single or female, that would be a zero for them, and this would be a zero for them. So if it's single and female, that would be actually that coefficient. And so that's why we have the same, the same values here and here. Now, what if we want to talk about female and married? So here, f female, uh, females who are married get 60 cents lower wages than single male. That's the reference category, but this coefficient is also not significant. Now, if we want to calculate the marginal effect from this model for a uh, person who is married and female, we need to collect this. This would be equal to one. This would be equal to one and the, their interaction would be equal to one because it's a married female. And so we would need to collect all of these coefficients, this coefficient plus this coefficient plus this coefficient. And that if you sum these up, that would be exactly that uh, minus 60 cents. So this coefficient would be equivalent to all of uh, all of these um, coefficients summed up to th summed up together because that represents the marginal effect for female and married on wage okay so now let's talk about several related indicator variables so regression that has several related indicator variables also needs to have one reference or base category left out and the coefficients will be interpreted with respect to this base category. So here we have dummies for three different regions. And so notice that here east would be equal to one minus um, uh, these other regions. So we can estimate a model like this where wages regressed on education. And then we have uh, these regions here. Notice here that east is the category that's missing. So that's the base category. Or we can have wage regressed on these categories where East is included this time, but West is the one that's not in the model. So the base category would be West. So let's start with the basic model that we do not have any independent variables first. So notice that if we calculate the average wage by region, these are the numbers that we have here. And what we are noticing here is that West has the highest average wages followed by East, and then uh, we have North Central, and then the South has the lowest wages. So now, if we estimate this model where we have East as the reference category, which is excluded from, from the model. Um, so here, um, so here we would have, first of all, the intercept here would be exactly the average wage for the reference category. So this will be the average wage for the East region. And if you notice this, that is the average wage for the East region. So you can also now compare uh, what, it, what is the um, salary in South as compared to East. So the salary in South are 98 cents lower than uh, wages in the east and the wages in the north central and west are not significantly different from those uh, in the east region because yeah these coefficients are not significantly different from zero now you can flip things around and notice here that west is the reference category which is omitted from the model and now we have um, here, this intercept of 6.61, that would be the category, uh, that would be the average wage for the West. And so here we have the 
coefficient on east is the um, is this coefficient, uh, so which is also not significantly different from zero. So now here we have that uh, wages in the north central region are 90 cents lower, and in the south are $1.23 uh, lower than the ones in the west region. So notice here, if this is uh, if this is the salary in west. What we're saying here is the north, north Central has 90 cents lower than the West. You can see that difference even from here, from the average wages. Or that South has a dollar and 23 cents lower wages than, than the West. So you can see these numbers here by just uh, taking the difference. So again, the intercepts here, if we don't have any other indicators, independent variables in the model, the intercepts would be exactly the average wage for the region. And then notice that these coefficients here flipped exactly were of the same magnitude uh, and significance, just flip sign. Why? Because this coefficient here is the average, is the salary in West as opposed to the salary in East. Well, this one is the salary in East as opposed to the salary in West. So that's why they're opposite in nature. So notice that sometimes when you change uh, which one is the base category, you would get more significance here. Why? Because now we're comparing actually to uh, the highest wage, and that's why we have more significant differences for the other regions as compared to, to this region. And oftentimes in an analysis, you have to figure out which one makes sense to be a reference category. So two criteria for that. The first one is, uh, Pick a reference category that would generate most significant uh, differences from this reference category because that's going to be more interesting to interpret those results. Or pick a category that makes sense like the status quo from which you can calculate, uh, you know, what would be if we move away from status quo. So now if you have several related uh, indicator variables, but now we have also an independent variable education. Uh, so this is the same analysis. So notice now that uh, we no longer have convenient interpretation of the intercept as the average wage, uh, but uh, we could still, and we see here that um, none of these coefficients are significantly different from zero. So in comparison to East, none of the other regions uh, have significantly different wages. But if we put West here as the uh, reference category, then we have that the other coefficients are uh, actually significantly different. So the way we would interpret it here is that um, wages in the North Central region are 1.01 lower uh, and in the South are 94 cents uh, lower than in the West region. Okay, so now let's talk more about indicator variable in regression and how we would form uh, interaction, um, interaction terms. So first, let's talk about a regression model where we have another sort of uh, in independent variable that is a non-indicator variable. So now if we just estimate this model of wage on education, this model would have the same intercept here and slope for males and females, right? Because if we don't have the variable female in the model, uh, these coefficients would be restricted. They would be the same. There would be only one coefficient for males and females. Now, if we want to relax things a little bit, we can put female as an independent variable here. And now this coefficient here on female would be the effect of female on wage. So here we would have the same slope uh, beta one hat for the effect of education on wage for male and female, but would, we would have different intercepts. So here the intercept for males would be this number, but the intercept for females, because this uh, variable here would be equal to one would be beta zero hat plus delta zero hat. So that will be the intercept for females and the intercept for males. So by just including a dummy variable here for females in the model, what we've accomplished is that now we have different intercepts for males and females, but the slope is still the same uh, on education for males and females. So let's go ahead and estimate these models. So if we just have the uh, uh, independent variable education, 
no uh, female uh, in here. Uh, we would say that uh, just the effect of education on wages uh, for each additional year of education, 54 cents more in wages. So now, what if we include female here as an independent variable? So how we would interpret this coefficient is that females have $2.27 lower wages than males. Notice how I am saying than whom? Than the reference category. So females have $2.27 lower wages than males. So here the intercept for males is 0.62. The intercept for females would be this number here plus the coefficient on female, which would be minus 1.65. So in this uh, regression here, where males is the um, uh, dummy variable, now we have that males have $2.27 higher wages than C females. So notice that this coefficient has the same standard error, meaning the same significance, and the same magnitude for the coefficient, only that it's opposite signs. Why? Because if we say that females get $2.27 lower wages than males, we need to say that males get $2.27 higher uh, wages than females. That, that would make sense. Uh, so now here the intercept for females would be this, uh, this number here, 1.65. And if we want to uh, calculate the intercept for males, we need to collect this one plus this one, and we would be getting this one. So notice that now <laughs> this was the intercept for um, males. If we want the inter intercept for males, we need to sum up these two numbers here, and it would be exactly that number. And the intercept for females here is the summation of these two numbers, which is exactly that number. So we see a, a, exactly the same circular thing here for the intercept. So note here that the um, coefficient on education is 0 uh, 0.51. So one additional year of education is associated with 51 cents increase in wage. Notice that we have the same identical slope for females and males because we are not allowing that slope right now to differ from males and females. So again, same slope. So graphically, how would these things look like? So here, uh, wage is plotted against education. Wage is plotted against education. So in the first model where we have the same intercept and same slope, uh, what we have here is the slope. Here is 0.54. That's what we found from the regression on the previous slide. And the intercept here would be minus uh, 0 0.91. This is where this would hit zero. Now. If we have uh, in the regression where we have female as the independent variable, notice that the slope is the same. So these two lines are actually parallel to each other and they're parallel to each other with a distance of 2.27. That was the coefficient on female. Uh, so that's why um, this one, the lower one is the line for females and the higher one by 2.27, that's the line for males. And the intercepts here, um, it would hit here zero at minus 1.65 for females and for males it will be at 0.62. So again, that would be the difference exactly of uh, $2.27. So that's how it looks. This is how these lines now look like when we relax uh, uh, for to have different intercepts, but still same slope. So now let's think about also in uh, relaxing the restriction of, of them having the same slope. So how we are going to do this by adding another variable here, which is the female times education. So now we would have uh, different intercepts and different slopes. So the slope for males uh, here would be just uh, because that variable will be equal to zero. So this term would fall out for males. So the slope for males would be beta 1 hat on education. The slope for females would be this one here, plus that would be equal to 1. So we need to collect this coefficient plus this coefficient. That will be the slope for males because that's what multiplies education. So the intercept for males, again, is this number here. The intercept for females is because this is going to be a 1. The intercept for females would be beta 0 hat plus delta 0 hat and that would be the, the intercept for females. So now we have different slopes, 
different intercepts for males and females. So this is the model that relaxes these restrictions of, of things being the same for males and females. So how would this look like? Uh, so if it's estimated, uh, this, is, this is what we have here. Uh, so here we have the slope for males is this number here, minus, uh, it's 0.54. The slope for females would be this number here plus this number here, which would be 0.45. The intercept for males would be uh, 0.2. And the intercept for females would be this coefficient here plus this coefficient. So that would be a minus 0.1 here uh, for the intercept for females. Now, instead of calculate, instead of estimating one model that has uh, female included here uh, as an uh, independent variable and also the interaction of female in education, we can basically just estimate two separate models. One of them, if we just have the females, one of them if we just have the males. And again, we, we can include female or female times education in this model because here all the females are equal to one, here all the females are equal to zero. So notice also that the sample size got split into the females and the males. So two separate models for females and males. So if you look at these coefficients, actually, they're exactly the same as what we talked before. So the model for male has exactly this coefficient is this coefficient. And this coefficient here for the intercept is this coefficient. Uh, it has to be because that's what we were saying. That's the intercept for males and that's the slope of education for males. Now for females, how did we get these numbers? Well, this number here for the education is this coefficient plus this coefficient. That's how we obtain this coefficient. And the intercept here is equal to the constant plus the coefficient on female. And that's how we got this coefficient. So now we can, so it's equivalent basically if we want to estimate the model like this, where we have an independent variable here, indicator variable and interaction term, or just estimate separate models for females uh, and, and males. So now notice that the coefficient on female and the coefficient on the, the interaction terms are not significantly different between males and females. So, uh, so we, our conclusion is that uh, we actually do not have significant differences uh, in terms of intercepts and slopes for females uh, and males. So if we want to plot uh, these two regressions, this is how we can do that. So now notice that these two lines are no longer parallel because um, they have different slope. So the slope for males is actually 0.54 and the slope for females, this line here, uh, is 0.45. So this one is a little bit steeper slope than this one. So the, the slope for males is 0.54 steeper than the slope for females, which is 0.45. And where they hit here, uh, the zero would be the intercept. So for uh, so for females, that would be at minus one. For males, that would be at uh, point 0.2. Uh, so this is what it means to have different intercepts and different slopes for uh, males and females. Okay, so now we talked about different intercepts and different slopes, um, but separately using a t-test. So what if we want to actually uh, do the f-test, which is uh, to determine whether the returns to education, experience, and tenure are the same for males and females. So we want to see basically if all of these coefficients are jointly significantly different from zero. So now I complicated things even more by including independent variables, three independent variables. And then I included a separate intercept for females. So this variable just separately and then interacted all of the independent variables here with females. So I have female times education, female times experience, female times tenure. Okay, so now what we want to do is test if uh, all of these coefficients, uh, delta zero, delta one, delta two, delta three, if they're significantly different uh, from zero. Now, if they are, we would have significant differences between males and females. So instead of doing a separate t-test for this coefficient, this coefficient, this coefficient, this coefficient, we can do a joint test uh, with, with an f-test. 
So we can estimate the restricted model where I have forced all of the coefficients to equal to zero. So we only have education experience and tenure because these coefficients here are put equal to zero by basically not including the variables. So we estimate these models, uh, the unrestricted and the restricted, and we collect the uh, SSR, which is the sum of square residuals for the restricted model and the unrestricted model here. And Q is the number of restrictions. So we have four restrictions here that we're testing. N minus K minus one is the degrees of freedom. And if we estimate these two models and we collect the SSRs and, and everything else, we get that the F statistic is 16.86. Now, if we look up the critical value, that's a 2.39, so which is less than this F statistic. And also, if we look at the p-value, it's less than 0.05. So our conclusion here is that the coefficients on female, female times education, female times experience, females times tenure are jointly significant. So our conclusion here is that females have significantly different uh, wages than males. Okay, so here's how uh, estimating these models look like. So this is the restricted model where uh, we have not included any of these independent variables, so their coefficients are restricted to zero. And these are all of the um, different interaction terms. So here we notice that the uh, coefficient on female is not significantly different from zero, but these uh, actually are significantly different from zero. So use, we can use either a t-test to, to test for significant differences like that between males and females, or the F-test would give you that all these four coefficients here are jointly significantly different from zero. So our conclusion is that we have different wages for males and females. So another very uh, equivalent way to um, test for differences across the two groups is called the Chow test. So the Chow test is an F-test for significantly different coefficients in two models that are estimated with two different groups. So instead of having one unrestricted model, two separate models are estimated, one for each group. So here we would have the regression model for females, the regression model for males, and this is the regression model with both groups where the coefficients are basically the same for males and females. So notice we don't have any interaction variables here because this is only females, this is only males. So here female would be equal to one to all of them and female would be equal to zero to all of them. So we cannot do interaction terms here and that's the restricted model. So here, instead of basically testing whether uh, coefficients um, are significantly different from zero, we're now testing if coefficients are basically different from each other. So that, that's what we're testing here. So this is the first time we're seeing that coefficients would be tested to be different from each other. So we want to know if this coefficient is different than this one, this coefficient is different than this one, this than this one, and this than this one. These are the different coefficients for females and males. So after estimating the models, we would be obtaining the SSR uh, for the restricted model. And then we would calculate the SSR, the sum of square residuals for one and two. So these are for the models with males and females. And this is how the child uh, the test statistic would look like, where here, instead of having the SSR for the unrestricted model, we would have these two SSRs summed up together. And here we would have these two SSRs summed up together. So that's instead of the SSR for the unrestricted model, and here we have a little bit uh, modifications of these degrees of freedom, but actually they're going to lead to exactly the same numbers. So again, if you look at these numbers uh, here and here, they would actually be identical to the numbers of the F test and they will lead to exactly the same F statistic. And the critical value is the same, P value is the same. So our conclusion again is that the coefficients on intercept education experience and tenure are significantly different from males and females. Therefore, we should estimate two separate models for females and males, or, or we should use these interaction terms and dummy variables for female to relax those restrictions. So as I said, the child test is equivalent to the F test. And here for the F test, we would have the sum of squared unrestricted would be equal the 
uh, sum, sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model would be equal to the sum of square residuals for the uh, model with only females and model only with only males. But we would get exactly identical results here. So here's how uh, the child test looks like. Um, so here we have the restricted model where we have male and female together included. And so we force the, uh, these slopes and intercepts to be the same. And here is where we have the model with only females and model with only males. Notice that the sample size are smaller. And notice these are the SSRs uh, for each of these uh, models. And so here we have like different coefficients for uh, males and females. So the child test wants to know if this coefficient is different from this one, this one is different than this one, this one is different than this one, and this one is different than that one. And once we run the child test, we conclude that these coefficients are actually jointly significantly different for males and females. So our conclusion is to estimate separate models for females and males. So as review questions, uh, you should know how to define indicator and dummy variables. Describe two different ways to estimate regression with two dummy variables and their interaction terms. Describe the interaction terms of indicator variable with non-indicator variables. How can we have in different intercepts and slopes? And then describe the F and test and the child test for differences across groups. Thanks for watching.